Thank you so much for the lovely introduction. I am so, so excited to be in Bavaria. Five years ago, I came to Europe and I had a lot of adventure. I traveled all by myself and discovered so much things about the history, culture, people, and most importantly about myself. I went back and I told myself I'm going to pick up web technology. So here I am once again, talking to you about yet another adventure, maybe Alice in Wonderland. But specifically, in today's talk, I want to share with you Alice in Hardware Land. Either ways, there is a lot of adventure to be had. So I'll be sharing with you three specific models of how JavaScript can interact with the hardware world. Let's talk about the first model. First model is basically JavaScript running on the hardware. The second model is JavaScript running on a host machine, for example, your laptop right here, and it is tightly coupled or tethered to the hardware. And the third model is JavaScript running on the server, but it is communicating or talking to the hardware, which has wireless capabilities through a gateway using the internet protocol. So these are the three major models of how JavaScript can interact with the world. And I hope today, no matter what you do in your work, you find in your own ways to have your own adventure with this fun world of JavaScript and hardware. Why don't we go to the details of each of these models? Let's start with the first one, JavaScript running on hardware. So when we talk about hardware, you can think of two different types of hardware, single board computers or microcontrollers. Let's start with single board computers. And I'm going to start with a mental model that we are all familiar with, JavaScript running on our laptop. Now, our laptop is not a single board computer. In this case, I'm using a MacBook. There are three things to take note. What is the processor? The processor inside my MacBook is Intel Core i5. The architecture for the instruction set running inside the processor is x86. And the operating system is Mac OS. Let's bring on some single board computers. Let's talk about Tesla 2, which is a single board computer. In this case, the processor is from the MediaTek company. The architecture instruction set is MIPS. And the operating system running on this Tesla hardware is Linux, OpenWRT specifically. And there are two other single board computers I want to mention, Raspberry Pi 3 and BeagleBone. How many of you have played with it? I'm sure there's some of you in the audience. There you go. So in this case, they also have their own processor, Broadcom and Citara. And their architecture is ARM-based. And their operating system is also Debian Linux. So whenever we think of single board computers, think of the concept just like your laptop. It is Node.js, but compiled specifically for ARM or MIPS, running on a tiny computer. But this computer is slightly, or in fact, a lot different than your laptop. Firstly, it has GPIO pins that allows you to connect to hardware. And secondly, sometimes these single board computers also comes with wireless capabilities. So what is a GPIO? GPIO basically means general purpose input-output pin on a chip or a computer board. The second model of hardware is JavaScript running on microcontroller. Now, microcontrollers do not run operating system. They are like single-threaded. And I really thank Gordon for going through the microcontroller concept yesterday. And there are three JavaScript engines that I want to specifically mention that can be run on microcontroller. So Node that we run has a JavaScript engine called V8. And I believe Francisca will be talking about that, and she works on V8. And there are three other names, which is JerryScript, DuckTape, and Esprino, that also runs on microcontroller, and it is a different JavaScript engine. So whenever you think about JavaScript running on hardware, always ask yourself, is it running on a single board computer using an operating system, or is it running on microcontroller? Now, I guess the best way is to go through a demo, right? So here I have a little demo here. So I can basically turn the knob here. You can see uh, this is live. It's not a static GIF. And I can just turn the knob or reset it. Why don't some of you, especially sitting on the front row, try it? So maybe what you can do is come and choose your Wi-Fi SSID Tesla router 
and go to this website, which is a private IP address, 192.168.1.101, and turn the knob yourself. Let me see who can do that. Take a bit of time. Oh, there you go. Somebody turned it. Did you put your... <laughs> Josie, I'm sorry, who's the first person? Simon, thank you. Thank you for turning the knob. Dude, Shelly. So thank you to all these people who have helped me turn the knob towards JS Congress right here. Thank you. So why don't we talk about the hardware itself now? So let me take out the servo. This is the hardware. Remember, I was telling that whenever JavaScript is running on the hardware, ask yourself, is it a single board computer or a microcontroller? In this case, it is a Tessel, which is a single board computer running OpenWRT, which allows you to create an access point or a hotspot that all of you, some of you, connected to it. And of course, Remember, I talked about the concept of GPIO. These are the GPIO pins. Look how I connected it to a servo right here. So these tiny computers are very, very interesting, and it can allow you to run operating system using Node.js, and you can connect it to hardware and have some fun. So let's talk about the software. So I'm using Tesla in this case, and Node.js is running inside this, by the way. And all I need to do is do a T2 push to make the code run on the hardware here. And I'm using Express so that you hit a HTTP get route and slash turn, and that's how you hit the route and then the servo turns. What is a practical application that you can find using single board computer? One of my favorite is robotics, a project called Open ROV. It is uh, using uh, to power underwater open source projects. It's really fun. And one of the thruster plugins is written in Node.js running on Linux. So go ahead and explore. I have three examples here. You can use BoneScript uh, for BeagleBone, or on and off GPIO access, or wiring Pi for Raspberry Pi. Lots of things to uh, explore using the concept of JavaScript running on hardware. Let's go to the second example. The second example, JavaScript is running on a host computer. In this case, it is my laptop, and it is tightly tethered, tightly coupled to a hardware. Slightly different, but let me explain. It's using something called Fermata. Fermata is a protocol for communicating with microcontrollers. So whenever, you know, uh, when I first came across Fermata using, say, Johnny5, I was like, there's a lot of magic happening. It's exciting, but you know, as an engineer, I'm like, there's no magic, isn't it? I really need to know why and how it's working. And in engineering, whenever you need to know why and how it's working, just look at the abstraction layers below, starting with the top layer, the app layer, which is running NodePixel, a node library using JavaScript. It's running right on my laptop. If you look at the package.json of NodePixel, it has something called Fermata.js. Sounds familiar? Fermata is the protocol for communicating with microcontrollers. Fermata.js has a dependency of serial port, which is written in JavaScript and C++. Once again, if you go to Fermata.js package.json, you'll find the serial port library there. From here, that's where the magic begins. From here, it is connected via USB cable to my Arduino board here. And that's where the Fermata sketch is running, written in Arduino, a flavor of C or C++. The Fermata sketch is then talking to the Arduino library running on the Arduino board. And from there on, guess what? We are all binary at the end of the day. It's machine bare metal code that's running on the microcontroller of Arduino platform, which is the Atmega328. So this is the abstraction layer. You have the node application talking to Fermata, talking to serial port, all the way down to the microcontrollers. Well, of course, um, it will be better with a demo, isn't it? So here's the Arduino board that I have. Let me rearrange a little bit. All right, and focus it. All right, there you see the Arduino board. And it is connected to this LED ring right here. So 
I want you to point, see this little LED here called TX and RX. What is TX and RX? Does somebody know? Transmission and reception. Means something being transmitted to the Arduino, to the host machine here, and receiving from there. So why don't we turn, out, turn up the red color? Notice what happens to the RX LED, all right? Is it running? Yeah. And then what about green? Let me go slightly closer. What about blue? Do you see it being blinking? Watch again. All right, green. What is happening when it's blinking? Basically, Arduino is receiving the command from the host machine, and that's the concept of tightly coupled, uh, tightly tethered app. Why don't we try with something more interesting? So over here, I also have something called a temperature sensor. So this is a temperature sensor, and I'm going to try to read it. So notice what happens to the LED when I try to do that. It's blinking. What is it doing? It's receiving the temperature data. Or rather, it is the computer is sending the temperature data right here. So this temperature goes back to the computer, and the computer is receiving. That's why it's blinking. So I'm going to blow on it. So you turn on the LED with the temperature. So when it gets hotter, it lights up. You can also do a little bit of interactivity. You can turn on. So let me clear it. And you can turn on this. And then you also have the color. How about breathe? This is a really special thing that I wanted to show to you. Notice here, in this case, the TX and the REDs, LEDs are always on. Why is this so? That's because at a very, very tiny interval, probably 100 or even lesser uh, amount of milliseconds, I'm sending two data from my laptop, the color and the brightness. And that's why you have this breathing pattern. So I have a Node.js server that's running right here. So notice here, let me show you. That's running right here. Yes. And that's how you are sort of getting, you see the temperature data here. So I have a last question for you while this is still running, and you see the breathing pattern. I'm going to break the server here. What do you think is going to have an effect on the LED? Remember, it's a tightly coupled app. Can I have some answers? It will? It will stop, but it will stop at that color. Any other answers? So why don't I do that and see what happens? It will just pause. So when I break the server on my laptop, it will pause there, because the last instruction was this brightness and this color. That's it. So I hope this kind of tells you about something about the concept of running Formata as a tethered app, as a tightly coupled app. Let's go through the hardware here. This is the hardware. And any Formata-based applications has three things to consider. First is the hardware, which is the NeoPixel and the Arduino board. And next is the host computer where you're running the JavaScript. So let me talk about the software here that is running the JavaScript. So here you see Node. And I initialize it. And finally, using the express routing, when I hit slash red for the HTTP get, I display the ring color. So once again, from my laptop, I go all the way to the Arduino to communicate this. Let's talk about a few examples of Formata that you can play with, starting with NodePixel that I used here. So whenever you talk about Formata base, remember three things, the JavaScript library, the corresponding Formata, and lastly, the hardware. I also have two other Johnny5. I know some of you have played with it. How many of you have played with Johnny5 before? Some of you have played with it. And Johnny5, uh, there are plenty of hardware to talk to. And you use standard Formata in this case. But sometimes it depends on the sensor itself. And you can use pink Formata as well. The next example is Particle IO, which is a hardware with wireless capabilities. In this case, the Formata is once again different. It is running Voodoo Tiki, and the hardware is Particle uh, Photon. I want to show you NodeBots Interchange, which is a very, very beautiful way to flash your firmware onto the board. So let's come here. And I want to show you, say, Interchange. 
and install. So remember, I told you, like for Mata, you have to have three things to consider. So firstly, you talk about, say, you want to install which type of Fermata and on which board. So in this case, you can say it's Uno or whatever. So use Interchange and flash the Fermata onto your board of your choice and have fun with it. So here are some libraries and projects to explore, Silent.js, Johnny5, and Nodebots, which is a community event. The last one is hardware talking to JavaScript on a server through a gateway using internet protocol. So this hardware specifically has wireless capabilities on it. So let me talk a little bit about wireless capability because I find this is a very exciting future. BLE is something that Gordon once again spoke about. You have it on your handphone, you have it on your laptop, it is medium range. Wi-Fi is also medium range, but there is specific difference in terms of power consumption and data rate. Notice that they are both high. How about wide area wireless communication? It's something that's found on your cell phone. But I want to talk about two more wireless uh, uh, technologies, which is LoRaWAN and NB-IoT. The difference between our conventional cellular wireless technology is LoRaWAN and NB-IoT is low power, and it is a low data rate which means you have low cost, low power sensors running for years on a single coin cell. Imagine the potential that you can use for industrial IoT systems or Internet of Things system. So let's talk about Internet IoT platforms, which is this part of things. JavaScript running on the server through a gateway using hardware. They talk to the devices using Internet protocol through gateway. Why don't we uh, talk about a demo? So on my hand, I have a tiny hardware with wireless capabilities that I was talking about. I want to show you some of the major features that an internet platform needs. The first step is to connect the sensor. See? All right, the next step is to get some sensor values. For example, temperature in this case which is 20 degrees, 20.6 degrees. And the third step is to visualize the sensor data. So here I am using, and when I kind of accelerate it, notice the graph. And you should also be able to interpret the data. So when I come here and... So, so in short, IoT platform or Internet of Things of platform can do three major things. And I think many of us will get involved in it in the coming five to ten years' time. You'll be at the receiving end of collecting the sensor data, visualizing the data, interpreting the data, and I know some of the talks also involved, involved uh, machine learning and uh, those algorithms, you will be using them at the back end as well. So let's talk about the hardware once again. This is the tiny little hardware. It's a Texas Instrument TI sensor tag, and it's in a jacket right here, and it runs on a coin cell. So, and it's really cheap. I think it's 26 US dollars or something like this. Really cheap. I really highly recommend you to play with it. It has a mobile app that comes with it, and you can just play with your handphone. But let me talk about the software that all of us as Node.js developers can use. So here I'm using sensor tag in this case. And remember uh, what a, a hardware with wireless capability does is that you connect to the sensor tag, and then you read the sensor value. Now, remember I told you that it needs a gateway and a server. Because the Node.js code is running on my laptop, it is essentially both a gateway, because my laptop comes with the Bluetooth low energy hardware capability to read the data, and also it's a server because it's running the Node.js server. So explore some IoT platforms where you can collect the data, visualize the data, and analyze the data. One of them is called ThingSpeak. 
this is uh, just a platform where you can hook up the sensors and play with it. But I think as engineers and developers, we want something like a platform. So for example, AWS. But Amazon also offers AWS uh, for IoT. And there is also a Google one for Internet of Things as well. So I highly recommend you to connect with these. And they have lots of uh, device APIs uh, for Raspberry Pi or Arduino and different uh, hardware to get connected and visualize and collect the sensor data. So at the end of the day, I share with you three models of JavaScript. So next time when you see JavaScript interacting with hardware, ask yourself these questions. Is it JavaScript running on hardware? If it is running on hardware, what type of hardware is it? Is it single board computer running a Linux operating system? Or is it a microcontroller using Fermata or embedded JavaScript? Secondly, if it is not running on a hardware, but it is using some kind of Fermata protocol, ask yourself, what Fermata is it using? What hardware is it using? What microcontroller board is it using? And remember, when you, uh, because the, sir, uh, the host and the hardware is tightly coupled, you will have some fun with the TX and the RX LEDs. And the last one is hardware with wireless capabilities, whether it's short range or long range, using the internet protocol to talk to a JavaScript server through a gateway. Then tell yourself, what is the wireless technology used in this case? What is the hardware? Where is the internet gateway? And where is my JavaScript running? I know it's both exciting and overwhelming at the same time, right? You have all this hardware and so cool things running. But I hope my talk has given you some of the lower abstractions to help you kind of decipher it. But when I first started, I got excited and overwhelmed at the same time. And I was like, oh, where should I start? I really don't know. For this, I have uh, an advice from a cat. I know some of you are cat lovers in this audience, right? And this is the cat that Alice herself one day met during her adventure in the Wonderland. It's called the Cheshire Cat. Maybe some of you have read it uh, during your childhood days. And she basically asked the Cheshire Cat the same question. I really don't know which road should I take. Like, it's so confusing. And then the Cheshire Cat asked her, well, where do you want to go? In our case as engineers, well, what do we want to build? But Alice was like, well, I didn't really don't know. Like, what do I want to build? Where do I want to go? And then, said the cat, it does not matter. So here's my uh, advice to all of you that follow the Cheshire Cat's advice. Just get it involved. Just try with whatever you have. In the end, have a fun adventure with JavaScript and hardware. Thank you so much. Thank you.